All right, so in this one, we're gonna talk a little bit about template inheritance using blocks. You probably have no idea what that means, so let's actually just do it so it kind of makes a lot more sense. Now, we have this file that's called base.html, so this is, the, this is gonna be our parent file, so the file that's overarching to all of other files, basically. Um, and we want to create a new file that would be specific to whatever view we're gonna be using that template in right so like for home I want to have a file called home.html I don't actually want to use base.html I want to use home and in home I want it to be a lot simpler than base just like something like this how this was simple and it made navbar just be by itself I want to do the exact same thing with doing home by itself all right so we are gonna move home from where we had it inside of our app into templates. But inside of this template folder, I'm gonna make a new folder in there called projects, or excuse me, products, not projects, but pro products. And in there, I just want to have home.html being in there. So I'm gonna go in here and just do new file and save a new one for home.html. I'm not gonna drag it or anything like that. I'm just doing brand new stuff here. So home.html, now I've got a file there and I'm gonna delete this folder of templates because we don't actually need it anymore, so it's gone. I said it was gonna be gone and now it's gone. All right, so how do we do this template inheritance? It's really straightforward. So all I'm gonna do right now is just say extends base.html. So it's inheriting base.html's preferences. It's taking the whole thing. So let's save that. In our view, we have home.html. Let's go back into our main um, project on Chrome. So we just refresh and it says template does not exist. Um, and that's because we put it in products, right? So it's gonna look in here. It looks everywhere. It looks in templates and it doesn't see it in home. So let's actually make the template being products slash home and do a refresh in here, ah, and now it shows it. And it's showing the context still, right? So like what we see here, username is, and then on base we had username is right here. So it is still showing the context um, and it's showing, well, we can delete this old home, right? Uh, and it's showing home, it shows nothing else. It's just showing the base file, right? So it's just showing all of this data. So. I want to be a little bit smarter about it and I'm going to get rid of this Jumbotron and instead I'll do block content and in block. Now this name content is a variable that I just came up with. Now it's probably better to call it content because your main block where your main content is going to be, most Django developers use block content for that. So following that will make it a lot easier for you. All right, so now that we have block content, let's actually go back into our home.html and let's add block content in here and say in block, paste it in, save it, and do a refresh. Huh, nothing changed. So this is what template inheritance does. It allows us to have code, so I'm gonna tab these in, we can see a little better, but it allows us to have code that's more specific to any one view or however we want to kind of set it up, right? So like in this case, it's using the base template, which you could change what it's going to be inheriting from. You could change it to a different file if you wanted, but it's going to inherit the base and in the base, it's going to include the nav bar. So we can be smart about this too, even better. So let's actually go back in, we'll refresh, and we see up here it's a static top navbar example. So that is a title tag, an HTML title tag uh, that's written out right here, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna call this CFE store, and then I will do block head underscore title, and in block and that's a percent sign and a curly bracket and then I'm gonna copy this block and I'm gonna add it to home 
and in here I'm gonna say welcome to and then I refresh and it says now it says welcome to CFE store and I can remove it and if it's not there it just says CFE store now if I call the block head two head title two it's not going to show up right because the block does not exist in the base at all which is good that's what we want to see so now that I have that working we can use these blocks in many other ways so if you're familiar with CSS at all you will be able to also do CSS overrides on any individual page so if we did block styles or head styles block head styles spell it correctly and then in block then we can copy this and then in our home.html anywhere on this page we can add that block because it's it's just rendering it in I'm gonna keep it in order like I'm gonna keep the head stuff above the content because I actually want to put the content at the bottom um, and in here I can just add a style tag and add whatever styles I want so like jumbotron let's just do jumbotron dot jumbotron and notice it does the all the correcting for us so dot jumbotron and I can say the color is red so it's going to change the color of the text so I refresh in here and now it changes all of my CSS specifically on home.html now if I wasn't using home so like let's say views I put this back to being base right if I did that it goes away and all we have is s so that looks like an error that we have so let's put it back in home and see uh, why that happened maybe on base.html we might have an s somewhere and we do right there alright so now that we have that we can really play around with this a lot so I personally do not like having style inside of this block because you're gonna repeat yourself a lot by having to write style so instead I like doing styles just calling the block styles and cut this out and paste it above this block in the style block and then change this to styles so then in my home I um, I don't have syntax checking in block styles but I'm okay with that because it, I do very little CSS customizing using this uh, if you do a lot of CSS customizing you should just make a full-on CSS file and link it into your project which we will show you soon on how to do that so now that we have block styles we can also use this for JavaScript and in our base we can go underneath all of this stuff so for JavaScript you could do the same thing uh, what I did last time you could do script like that um, I'm gonna do script I'm gonna actually set up jQuery which is a library of JavaScript so it makes it a little bit easier to work with JavaScript stuff. If you don't understand jQuery or JavaScript, that's okay. We're gonna show you some basic things here and there, uh, step by step. So you can just follow what we're doing uh, and not have to know that much about jQuery to actually make it happen. However, if you want to learn more, it would be a good idea to learn more about jQuery. All right, so I'll do block jQuery is what I'm gonna call this block. And I'll end it. All right, so in this block, I want to get the jQuery started. So I'll do document, dollar sign document ready, and then a function. There we go. All right, so what this is doing this is it's checking the document for when it's fully loaded and it's ready to go. And then it'll execute the jQuery code of whatever it is, or the JavaScript code which jQuery is JavaScript, so it's gonna execute the jQuery code. So we can copy this, go back into home, and I'm just gonna type out alert, welcome. All right, so I just typed out some JavaScript, or excuse, uh, jQuery, excuse me. I typed out some jQuery, and now we can actually test it, so I do a refresh, welcome. So this means that I have my jQuery is definitely working. Another way to know is if I click on that, uh, but I am not going to actually keep any jQuery on this page at this time. 
I'll leave the block just so you guys can see it later, but I'm gonna comment it out and refresh. So there it goes. So that's a way to comment out jQuery. And now the last thing I want to mention is comments. So uh, block comments. So if you do a pound sign like that, you can write comments here. All right, so that will that's actually comments that you can make in the template if you want. If you don't want it to be rendered as HTML, where this is a comment for HTML, as some of you might know. Um, so you can write template comments just like that. And also anything outside of blocks here, like here, will not actually come through, right? So it's not actually gonna show up on this page. And that's because it's gotta be in a block on the, page that you're working on so like home.html and also the parent so whatever you're inheriting from it also that block has to be there too all right so this is some block basics we're going to be doing a lot more in this stuff so you'll see it in action more so you don't have to fully understand how it all works yet uh, but you could try it out and see how these different things can work um, so in the next one we'll actually start to create our model that will store our product data so like the actual names of the products and all that so See you in the next one.